And we're back. It's Mahogany. Let's go. Do it. Now do you hear it? Can you hear it? Because I don't hear it on headphones. Oh, my bad. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Mahogany here at Jolt Radio Studios. You are currently listening to the goddess Aaliyah. I miss you, and I miss hanging out with you guys. Oh, man, I missed y'all, too. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. I've been recapping. School started. It's been one of those things when school starts, you're like, man, I got to stick to this syllabus. So obviously, if if I'm not texting you, if I'm not interacting with people, it's it's because I'm reading. Reading, reading, you know, I feel like reading is one of those uh, things that you like, you, if you want to keep the knowledge, you have to like distract yourself from things. So I'm yeah. glad I'm back. I miss y'all guys. Obviously, on my left hand side, I have my Matt Oz in the building. Buongiorno. What's going on, demons? <laughs> <laughs> in front of me, I have my boy, the international playboy, uh, France. Like I fit, like I fit. Uh, yeah, my boy, spe- yeah, he speaks Haitian. That's right. He speaks Creole. <laughs> he is Haitian. He is Haitian wow. Creole. Is you know so what? You know, uh, I mean, that's a good question. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, 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 because yeah. we'll talk about that later. It's no, like, big deal about that. But I want to get this, like, sound effect ready for everybody. Because, you know, I like to show my, like, animation about I am for, with things, you know. But we got a special guest in the building, you know. Yeah. Sorry about that. That was not what I needed to click on. That was not. That was not the one. That was not, that the, was one. not the one. That was not the sign of things. Now, we, the good thing is we get a repeat at this. So, because now I picked the right video. So, a little, little, little drum roll. You know, you might see him on the streets at the rum and coke party. Sometimes you see him playing jazz at one of the most, uh, I want to say, like, I don't want to say niche. I want to say it's just sexy. It's a sexy vibe. Yeah. You might see him at MIA Soundbar playing vinyl in the building. 
Jesus Rodriguez. Hey. Yeah. Man. Thank you so much, man. Welcome, thank welcome. You. Thank, you. Man, thank you so much for joining us on this. Uh, our, we're tamed right now, but we're really like wild. Yeah, we usually got like some shots going. Or yeah, some shot. going. We might do that later. <laughs> we might do that later. But right we're now, much we're... older than we appear. <laughs> <laughs> much older. Shit, I started drinking before I came, so I don't know what you guys do. Right. I mean, show. I had a beer, but I was like, just to get to like flush everything out of the system. Mm. But I was like, one of those things. Like, All right, I'm gonna like take it easy. I'm also I'm like I'm very caffeinated right now. I don't know about <laughs> you guys. Like I like I I I had a test today. And I work out before I take any tests. So I don't know about you guys. I had Celsius. Have you guys ever had Celsius before? No, not yet. No. They're all right. They're, it's, it's basically like... Uh, it's an energy drink. It's an energy drink, but there's more B12 in it. But okay. there's a lot of caffeine in it, which is like uh, about 200 milligrams. And then later I had like a Coke Zero, and that has its own caffeine. And I was like, wired. boom, I'm wired to take this test. Wired, I didn't man. eat. I didn't even eat, dude. I was just like, I'm going to just focus. I'm going to read. And everything's going to come naturally to me. Just keep on, like, keeping on. So I'm glad I'm here. I'm chilling. I had a little beer. I'm sitting in the vibe right, right now, obviously. Um, Between Celsius and Red Bull, which one would you go to? I, I haven't mean, tried it yet, so I don't know. But I don't do the energy drinks. I, try to I mean, I really lean. Don't. Don't. Right. I really don't it's, recommend it. But it's but sometimes like sometimes for coffee. a test, maybe if you're tired. Coffee I mean, you didn't get co- to take everyone, a nap. honestly, it should be coffee. But I was like, I was working out. You feel me? Like working out. It was like I don't know. I don't know what like the like the workout regimen is for everybody and stuff like that. But it's something like you know, obviously it goes based on like age and like you know how much you can consume. Mm. I usually go with that one because like uh, mostly because it's. Uh, all the vitamins are in like vitamin B to give you the mostly energy, and I don't feel too cracked out. Right, like B twelve. I yeah. you. it's more like the Coke Zero that I took right before the test, so I can be like, I'm gonna be on my shit. Right. <laughs> Speaking of um, it's like Coke, top it off. <laughs> um, you said rum and Coke. Uh, that's the uh, that's the name of the party that my man yes. does. So please, um, so I'm going I, from I mean, talking from drinking. I'm pretty ignorant to it. So, uh, and le- uh, can I? Yeah, man. So, um, so I'm one third of this collective of, of DJs called Rum and Coke, and we it's comprised of myself, uh, DJ Kumi, and Harold Fandino. And and the concept of the party is that we basically play the entire spectrum of music of Latin America and the Afro Caribbean. So you know, so. It's like everything, and including the African music that is also in conversation with the music of this hemisphere. So um, imagine a night where you'll listen to anything from Hector Lavo to Tabu Combo from Haiti to oh, Fela sure. to Gal Costa and to like some crazy Mexican freak out psych rock that you've never heard before. Oh, sure. Yeah, so it's, it's it's the party, you know, is a really a celebration of kind of like mm-hmm. our our cultural legacy, mm-hmm. which you know, I, I think it's it's one of the reasons that that people have connected so hard with it. Right. You know? Oh cool. um yeah man, so we and we do a monthly party um Where at uh when? So we do the fourth Sunday of every month at Dante's Hi Fi. Oh man, I love Dante's. Yeah, That's my wow. first yeah, man. So best we, cocktails uh, in for, Winwood. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love Hi Fi. Yeah, man. We have actually uh, one of the longest, if not the longest running residency at Dante's since oh, they opened. Oh shit, dope. Yeah, man. And um, it's been, it's been. And I bro, go there. Like I can imagine, like that. Yeah. Bro, it's been a crazy ride. It's a ride. blessing. Yeah, I mean, you guys started off like at Gramps. That. I mean, I, that's how I knew about you yeah, guys. So, so wow. When, wow. Yeah, so, wow. Yeah, man. So, like, the party started, uh, you know, I've been in, uh, in it in part of the collective for, like, five years now. We started, wow. me and Harold started in 2018. And there was an original lineup before that comprised of DJ Kumi, Action Pat, who was, like, the original founder of the party, and DJ Spam from spam all stars and oh, wow. yeah and so the party they you know they they were doing it um you know at gramps uh pat moved sh- to chicago and spam had you know his com- uh working commitments at you know student you know recording studio work and stuff like that so he didn't want to keep doing he didn't really want to continue doing like nightlife work so because me and harold were hanging out so much at this party Kumi was just like, hey, I want you guys to be a part of it. I'm like, Kumi, you've never seen me DJ ever. <laughs> right. He's like, no, no, no. I know you know the music. I know you got the records. You're in. That's it. 
Bro, he like, knew you got the vibe. He, you passed the vibe check, bro. That was man, it. You passed the vibe check. You knew man, who to know. Yeah. That's what it was. Man, and and it's been it's been crazy, bro. Like like the pandemic really did one on, on us because like it, the momentum the party was taking like mm-hmm. right before. We had gone to Mexico um, at the end of 2019 to Mexico City. We played oh. for like over 600 people. Like that, people have paid cover to be right. there, which is oh, it's shit. insane because we've like, never charged a thank cover. Thank you. To this <laughs> day, to this day, we've never charged a cover to go to our party. So it's just wow. like to see that was crazy, crazy, crazy. And um, and then you know like things were really starting to get rolling. We had like a really successful Art Basel that year, and then you know. February of 2020 was like we didn't know that was like our last party yeah, for was like <laughs> over a good year and a half. COVID, you know, yeah. yeah. So, uh, bro, I could keep talking. So just let me know. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we can go. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're okay. good. Okay. A little bit. I like where this is going. Oh, uh, okay. Because I mean, we could do the transition now, but uh, I mean, yeah, let's talk a little bit more about like the okay, you know, like how how COVID affected you. Well, um. I mean, personally, like the the uncertainty of everything. I think you know, like like I, I I was very lucky that you know I I took my exercise seriously during that time, you know, and and I read, and I listened to as much music as I could, you yeah. know, like um you know there there was some like challenges you know work wise uh you know but I'll keep it about the collective and then you yeah. know yes. um as far as like you know the party stopped we continue to do our, our Radio Caribe radio show um, that the way we did it was crazy because we were doing our sets everyone at home yeah and then we would live the stream yeah and then we would all send our sets to Ian to Tony, Tony Pizzicato, Pizzicato Tony Pizzicato and he would Frankenstein this thing in a way where like we were sending our voiceovers via phone like oh, voice wow. notes oh, shit. and then he was EQing everything to sound like we were all in the studio together oh wow like if you listen so he made it sound yeah, like you guys are like right here how we are right now bro if you listen to those shows like you won't believe that ev- we were in four different places when that thing happened oh the, shit yeah. it's production yeah it's yeah. that pre-production yeah the I mean, production I, man, I like, I like it raw dog yeah. <laughs> we messed up so many times it's like it don't matter dog yeah you know? and so um, and so we, we we did that and um, dude and, and obviously like 2021 was like weird because we were trying to get this party back together and we didn't you know it was we knew it was time to move on from Gramps mm-hmm. um and we were just like talking to venues and then just like the energy was just really weird because you know it was just like yeah but wait but the new variant and and yeah okay but no and and we were supposed to do um august of 2021 we were supposed to do the opening party for the third horizon film festival we were like we were psyched because this was like our our you know this was going to be the first time we played since like february like february of the year before man party gets canceled new variant Uh whatever uh-huh. It's like, man, what the? What, what was it? That variant, Marion, or what was it? I don't, I don't think. Omarion. Omar- <laughs> really? <laughs> I remember the memes. No. I know the memes. It was Omicron. I remember Omicron. 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 Yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, that's uh, what it was. It was, it, was one, it was one of them. It was one of them. And um, and I remember we had like, like talks really started developing with this venue, uh, which I won't name, but it, you know, we got really, really close to like. You know, closing out the deal, they were opening like a new space within the venue, and they really like they, were, you know, they were showing interest in it, and it looked like you know things were really gonna start again. Right, dude. Uh-huh. Like after being like ghosted for like two weeks, they hit us back asking if we knew how to give salsa lessons. I'm like, what? What, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Yeah, like no, like we don't we don't do salsa lessons that's like too, too. we, we yeah, play these we play these records like that's it <laughs> there's no featured act um and then well unfortunately we you know we're not we're not gonna be able to do this with you guys because we want to do like salsa lessons and i'm like no, uh, no, but bro no, okay. it's you know look i said no yeah, but yeah, bro it's, it's, it's wow, tacky dude it but it's so crazy how things line up for you man like mm-hmm. like the month it happened was the month dante's opened yeah, bro, it's it, I, I cannot make this shit up. And the month afterwards, like the end of the month, this was like end of October, Rich Medina was already in contact with Kumi, you know, and the talk started about 
bringing rum and coke to Dante's, you know, and and that was rich. We didn't like I didn't speak to him. Like yeah. Harold didn't hadn't mm-hmm. spoken to him. Like you know, yeah, just like I do. Yeah, you know, and mm-hmm. like in January of 2022, we're back in the game, man. And Damn. It's, yeah, and 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 it's been it's been crazy, bro. Like like we've been. Sounds like a blessing, bro. It's it's well, been yeah, it's, sounds like it's, it's, it's an experience, a ride for sure. Not a lot of people get to do this. For, yeah, I know. For, you know, but, for a living, bro, yeah, the, exactly. The gratitude I feel, man, and especially how the thing has grown since. You know, like you know, May we traveled, we traveled to Toronto to play oh. with. You know, we played at this party called La Rumba Buena. Mm-hmm. You know, which which is like kind of the equivalent of, of what we do. You Sounds know. like a perfectly theme uh, yeah. event for like after Christmas or like yeah yeah. You know, like. And we went we went to their party in May, and um, bro, it's just been crazy, man. Like we opened up in October of last year. We opened up for this uh, Zamrock group called Witch, which is like the Witch is like one of the pioneering groups of the rock scene in Zambia. Oh, okay. yeah, from the seventies. Like, wow. yeah, and, like, there's, like, two remaining me- members that are touring with, like, musicians now, and, like, because of the, the reissues that came mm-hmm. out of that music, right. you know, we opened up for them, like, and the moments that we had with, like, the main singer with Jagari Chan, that was, like, that's man, dope. mind-blowing, man, like, mind-blowing, and, then, like, and then fast forward, you know, like, we, we do support music for the Moscovic dance band, you know, like, We've we've done we did a private event for Spotify. We did this private event for like Blue Beetle the film because like the the director is like a Puerto Rican who's really into salsa. Like we got right. we were a part of that and it's yeah. dude it's been crazy man like the like, exposure been, yeah, and everything. Dude, yeah. it's just been, and and we're not hunting that down. Mm-hmm. We're not looking for that. Like it's been just people coming up to us like hey, been organic. You know, yeah, hey, it's yo, been extremely been vibing just, with you guys, it's man. It's something different, you know, it's not the same like mm-hmm. I hate to say the same Latin vibe that you hear like oh, like this is what Latin music is. It's not just like a reggaeton and all We're that. not a stereotype. Yeah, yeah, there's more to it, especially like when the uh what you guys do is like there's more foundation of Latin music people like don't really hear that much and should be yeah. like listen to more. Yeah, and 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 we still have to like like deal with like that like that clash because people still think it's either going to be like like we're supposed to be like a salsa party like strictly, which we're not. Mm-hmm. Or a cumbia party, which we're not, or a merengue party, which we're not. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we play all that stuff, but it's yeah. it's, it's it's part of a much bigger equation. Yeah. yeah, like right. a big big mix. You know, so so yeah, man. It's, yeah, I mean, you want to get ready for the DJ mix? I want to ask you more. No, okay. Other questions about the other okay. music that you play okay. as well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as you set up okay. on the decks. Yo, I want to give a shout out to the Dolphins for winning. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Congratulations. You don't hear fans. that too often. I mean, Tua came up, dude. Yeah. You know, 400 yards or something. 460 like that. yards, dude. Tyreek Hill bombing, catching touchdowns. You no. Know, Last Dolphin that actually opened uh, with more than uh, 400 yards passing was Dan Marino back in like 90. Oh, like early 90s. Super. Mid 90s. Probably 90s. 96. Yeah. But yeah, I, like I'm mid-90s. probably off, but I do remember Dan Marino was the last yeah. one who opened a home game with yeah. like that. That's when uh, Ace Ventura was coming out. That's uh, that's exactly uh, when that time was. I mean, that's I a really good horn. movie. Uh, <laughs> that's a really good movie. Yeah, that's it's, it's a good movie. It's but a good movie. It was one of those movies that, like, you know what? Uh, it. it it kind of represents what Miami is a little bit, but not too much. Not too much. <laughs> it's more like the Broward crowd that it really represents. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it is. It, you feel me? That's what it really represents. It really does. But, you know, shout out to Dolphins winning. Shout out to UM uh, beating Texas AM. You know, I don't know if you guys are into Shout out football. to Jovich for crying on camera again because Serbia lost the FIBA World Cup final. I mean, but he's and, a young kid, oh, bro. He's a young kid. Twice. He I mean, he's a young kid, dude. <laughs> First like, the finals, then the it, it just, bro, when you, like, imagine being so young, so young, and you get thrown in a situation like yeah, you're yeah, obviously, yeah. you're winning, yeah. and you're like, oh, my God, everything. And then when you lose, you you really feel it because it's something like, God, man. He's invested. He's invested. Mm-hmm. He's invested in stuff like that. But shout out to them. I know, obviously, Shout out to your Eagles winning Thank the first you. home game. 
Uh, we all took that down stuff. the Patriots. You're welcome. I mean, yes. They're, you're welcome. Uh, Patriots, I mean, we can go on and on about that. Uh, any shout outs you guys want to give him before we get into the mix? No, no, no. Shout out to the baby mamas. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, shout out to the people who support us uh, on Yo, the way Shout out here. to everyone tuning to Joel Radio right now. Ready? Jesus is ready to go. He's going to show us some skills. Spin it, and, we, spin it. and we're going to do our thing. Yeah. And thank you again for tuning in to Mahogany. We'll be right Mahogany. back with Jesus yeah. Rodriguez.
I think Mangistu Haile Miriam is my neighbor. Whoever it is moved in and put an automated gate up. Repainted brick walls atop which now cameras rotated. By eight the place dark, one light burned later. Razor wide like a slinky. Rumor is Paul bomb took the secretary right eye and pinky. Evenings he take a sniff of whiskey on the veranda. I wonder what he's thinking. In the morning the maid brings coffee from the kitchen. Some nice strange music plays. I lay in bed and listen. Downstairs I hear my mother breaking dishes. My father tripping. It's been quite bad lately. High tension, galvanized steel, security fencing. To get through the day, give myself a mission. Anything will get me out the house a blessing. His bodyguard chews cat, spits black in the rhododendron. Blacked out rains rumble when he start the engine. Avocado tree hang over the property line. I watch from as high as I can climb. The dog looks up and whines. The hills are alive with landmines. I live in my mind. Not sure what I'm looking for, but I'll know what I'm fine. My mother sent the gardener to look for me, but the sky is a great place to hide. Never told the truth in your life. Can't start now. Never so slowly, slowly locked up in your own house. Never told the truth in your life. Can't start now. Ever so slowly, slowly locked up in your own house. The guests start having doubts. The host nowhere to be found. There's ghosts in the building's bones. So many skeletons in the ground. When everything collapsed, he just melted into the crowd. Suitcase packed, melted down the crowd. But a haven's only safe as long as they want you around. Tomorrow, it's no telling. Hollow when you done selling. You see how well they treat me? My own courtyard for private strolls. And in my chalet, every possible amenity, not to mention the occasional night visit. <laughs> <laughs> I must confess, Kavit, this detention seems to look well on you. Mm. <laughs> But so does captivity look well on our arm. We are fattening up for the feast. Or perhaps, as you say, on a wife we treat with special favor because she's going to bear us a child. What happens when the great day comes and there is only a calabash under the rock? <laughs>
Os homens estão pensando que a onça morreu. Os homens estão pensando que a onça morreu. Que a mata é deles. Tudo que a chuva levar, o vento trará tudo de novo. Os homens estão pensando que a onça morreu. Os homens estão pensando que a onça morreu, que a mata é deles. Quando esse tempo mudar, a mata dará frutos de novo. Somos um rio que transborda através de canções. É o bater das pancadas de mil corações. Se agitam, cantam e vão querer, sobretudo viver, sobretudo viver, sobretudo viver, e sobretudo viver. Agitam, cantam e vão querer com tudo viver, sobretudo viver, com tudo viver e sobretudo viver, com tudo viver e sobretudo viver.
They confuse belief for desperation in the quest for preservation. I wish for them success and hope their lessons make the presence greatness. All my talent is the session's cadence. Look, estimations over hours work like special agents. All the best to me is art when I'm painting. It leads to restoration, in turn self-investigation. Failure led me to water, then inspiration. Ego tripping led to expiration. Running from what I don't want, but I'ma have to face it. And when I do, blessings come as affirmations. Patience. They say you made it out the rain with no vacation. Saying grace is a special statement. But I don't feel no fear pain. Because I can see an angel seeping through that old broken window. They say you wandered very far. Very far. Huh. Blank paper and imagination. College dropout to graduation. They say that innovation leads to admiration. I confirm it. A warm reception when you earn it. Congratulations. Secrets. Nothing stays in Las Vegas. Aces. I might strike a minor chord, but still a major player. Waking up to bake a cake and add another layer. Only way to make it's never running out of favors. Read the pages till the day that my fate ascended. Pearly gates on my way to heaven. Humble beginnings lead to greater endings. Another day to praise the reverend. But I don't feel no fear pain. It's those moments while fighting for survival that some people will call it through the panic. It's repeatedly described as spiritual, even divine. Could it be the work of guardian angels? Exceptions cool. Tranquility still word the max. Walk across rain cover blocks under heavy facts, heavy fire and no cover. Through his shoulders to establish who the fuck was better. Me or my demons. All the vanity, like the fame through the dash up in my mind. Mysterious as fuck to myself sometimes. Other times, I identify my cons. What you want? I got the consent, casual still. I'm only here for your cheeks. Fuck a thrill. A lot of bitches ain't worth much, but a nut and a headache. Suck my dick to the headaches. Enter the fray and then got your shakes. Simple and clean is the way I cut you down. The car is singing at your weight. They try to wipe you down while we getting down. Ignorant and giving up what is up. Know the last that you understand balance. My last girl said I didn't show enough love. She was right. Having an affair with the rats. Bar for bar with no climax. No way to relax unless she threw it back. Little Danny without the watchful eye on the Yagi. Unaware of the stakes. To your lover or they entertain the thought of hate Picking scabs on the internet Forever like scars Never thought some of y'all would be into that I see people torture cats for the legend of rats That was never there Band together like the bars Otaku till the end 
Words to the Sailor Moon backpack. The land tell me cope with how the world is whack. Been weak at all of this since I was a weakling. Every day, everything that I'm on to adjust the hard gravity. Whip is not firehouse, nigga. Aim to be flame driven. The frontier killer from the Grand Prix. Hey, yo, pulling up leisurely to the driving grip. Solo. Over you and everyone you came with. Grip over all things. Over all things. Not deferable when either stumbles across solo or gangly. The goat was referable. Nothing's more frightening than something that's free. So, of course, cats mortified by me. The hot water has more timber as it exits forces. The eggs was cold, but wine and it's cowardice. So, I allow my qualm to dissolve. All in all, you can't spell function without fun. Omit that. Marvel at how I unravel. Walked outside, the welkin was raffian. A poisonous pink. Ghoul and earth unfinished. Bet you ping, no realistic case. I get slotted by fans who still mirror people. People at best, the largest loner to the end is perplexing, a conundrum, how I made or make friends, and don't inquire about the dog, why, home team scores from dome and gave it a slip, where's my enthusiasm and childhood's bottoms, sequestered from my reach, parted minds, open my mouth, a whole nova came out, all off the first line, facts born, leaving you wounded like world's boring, patchwork storyboard, walk short to even a brittle vessel, after agendas in conflict, the grip be the army of God peak like a commander. Smoking blast burn, he sweet arcanine, great as salamander. Plebeian deluded, thought they was the pro tag, they just a random. Damn, sir, welcome back to our cool planet. Extend something fiscal like Wukong's caliber. Fury incurred by a Dawson foot. Prince left behind his proof, I stop by. Light the fuse, then follow it back to the box. Blow a tent out of the ocean like marine life colonized. On our way to these depths, conclude you slowly like marine snow. The struggle can be beautiful, yeah, I know. Usually from afar and sometimes up close. Grim.
se repite la historia en dos desconocidos. Un hombre que camina el fondo de su vaso y descubre su orgullo perdiendo el espinazo y una mujer que espera exiliada en su red. sobre la Cuento 
sobre Drácula y el ángel crecerá cuando diga desconfío cuando pierda la mano Welcome back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a jam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Welcome back to jam. Mahogany. Yeah, that was a beautiful... Yo, like, let's do it, man. Let's give the man a round of applause. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, man, That's, what a set, my bro. You, bro. What a set. Thank that was some groovy shit. I was just outside, and I was like, <laughs> man, we had to leave the door open just so I could hear the music through. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that was amazing. That was amazing. It was amazing. Thank you, man. No, Thank you. definitely, um, you know, like, more for the exposure of, you know, like, different sounds of, and different, you know, songs, different music for, you know, a lot of people may not get the chance to hear this because, you know, we're drowned out with commercial music or, you know, just basically all around us. So, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Thank you. For yeah. That. No, I think that's, uh, I think that's one of the, the best things about, you know, being able to kind of play, you know, you know, play these records out, you know, and it's like... Cause like I want to share my excitement of what I'm listening to Absolutely. with people, like you it's know, your perspective, yeah, of music, like you know? you know, cause I know I know how I feel when I hear it. And I'm like, man, are you like I want you, like you gotta check this out, you know. Yeah. I'm so over my 2000 new metal phase. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> now was that all vinyl or? Was yeah, it was an all vinyl set, dude. All, all vinyl. vinyl. You hear that, ladies and gentlemen? All vinyl. I like vinyl. it because you, that, that's, that, you, that's, that's, that's some sound. You, you right guaranteed there. me off air, uh, 7 p.m. vibe, and that you did, dude. Yeah. It's yes, like, sir. yo, I'm just here. I'm just vibing. I can talk, smoke have a cocktail. Oh, yeah. Smoke a cigarette, you know, hang smoke out. Smoke a joint. Yeah. I mean, the little jazz cabin doesn't yeah, hurt man. nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say that. But... I, I mean, I basically wanted to play what I would have heard on a Tuesday night at this hour. Like, that's, that's exactly That's exactly it. That's that's what would have gone down at home tonight, you know. Like, yeah, this yeah. Cause this, is, this is why I want to have you on the show because like everyone's used to you doing rum and coke, and then I saw you play at MI Soundbar, and it was like, oh, this is something completely different that yeah. I don't get to hear. Yeah. And I'm glad that you brought that because it's like one of those things that like right before we went live on air, uh, you showed me the song that we were just playing was a sample uh, from the Alchemist on the Never Ending Story with uh, with Jay Electronica featuring Jay Z. Uh, you say that was like Caida that was sampled. Yeah, so that that uh, that was from uh, that composition is from a singer songwriter from Argentina by the name of Lito Nevia, and that album is is like man, it's like this cosmic jazz folk rock album, you know that that you know it's it's uh, it's just one of those things where. The singularity of that album for me is is so special. You know, it, it's become such a like, you know, p- an important piece of music. Like the the whole album is is on that vibe. You know, yeah, it's yeah, a exactly. very beautiful record. You know, like, um, you know, and the, the song is called La Caída, the Fall. You know about what happened. You know, where do we go next? You know, like it's it's a, amazing. And it makes perfect sense that. That he would sample this song, yeah, because he always adds his little like flair, his little his own sasson. And, and I'm glad Albanian, his own though. Sasson. Yeah, and I'm and I'm glad it was like that. Jay Electronica used that, mm. yeah, like because it wouldn't have made sense on 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 any other rapper, you know. Nah, nah, it's nah. perfect. It was perfect. I mean, the rest in peace, MF Doom. He can do some good work as well. But Jay Electronica, he was one of those rappers that I felt was like, obviously he was like, uh, not as so like commercially promoted as, as these other hip hop artists, right? Because like Atlanta took over the music scene, but he was like I don't want to call it backpack, but you know it's that lo-fi hip hop. I was always gonna associate Jay Electronica to Adult Swim, you know, because that's how I heard about him. He also yeah. liked Flying Lotus and all that stuff. Yeah, and like obviously uh, you know how Flying Lotus is the son of a jazz musician. Uh, I forgot the name of the jazz musician. So, uh, uh, well, his uh, his dad was a jazz musician. His aunt was okay. Alice Coltrane. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Flying Lotus. But uh, but yeah, man, Jay, Jay Electronic is like a special dude. I mean, he's a, a very, you know, he's one of these spiritual dudes who will chop your head off. And and I like that. You know, it's I'm like some I'm some I'm some katana like you know like machete. Yeah. yeah. Like, like you didn't f- like you don't feel it and then you know your head's on the floor. You don't know what just happened. Yeah. You know like right. he's mastered in his art. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that Absolutely. fatality in like Mortal Kombat. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I I just want to know like how like obviously you come from Latin descent. How do you go upon like listening to like these type of records? Like the ones that before you were playing, besides the like Aida, there was yeah. other records that were like, all right, this is more like, I think it was a little bit not modern. I don't, dude, I don't, I don't know how to label it. I don't know how to label it. <laughs> you don't know how to work. The, the, I mean, yeah. there was a, there was a few things. I mean, I played like uh, some some stuff from Ethiopia, yeah. um, which I then moved into like you know the Billy the you know the second to last like Billy Woods album that uses like Ethiopian samples. You know, um, That's dope. and 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 then I, I moved into like this uh, hip hop producer by the name of Derringer, who's using kind of like samples in that vibe too. So that beat that dropped, you know, that had like that kind of like you know Northern African kind of you know feel, you know, like. Um, how would you go about like finding these records or like how do you know? Yeah, like just what exposed you to music? Yeah. Like, yeah. like how did you decide to get fun Ethiopian yeah. mix and try and figure that shit out? Like, I'm just thinking, Man, like, damn. Yeah, I, I mean, I've I've been kind of obsessed with music for pretty much my like like my whole life. You know, like it it's it's been kind of like it's been like the thing that that I go to you know for everything you know and and so like. I have stories from when I was like in third grade, you know, like, you know, dress up as, you know, your hero. And I dressed up as like, like fourth grade, I was, I dressed up like as Jimi Hendrix. And like, <laughs> and that's not even of my time, but it was like, I could tell you a story of like, you know, music class, there was a, there was this project. And I still remember this like vividly. It was a project. And the project was like, you know, you picked a, a, a music decade had to do a presentation on it and you had to like partner up and and all this stuff and um i was left without a partner and i was left with the 60s which was like the farthest back from like you know you know i was born in 82 so like like i was i was so it was out of your range pissed man because like Like, because you know because like like, there's like the immediacy of like the 70s you could do disco 80s you could do whatever your uncles are listening to but there's still a small relevancy to the like late 60s and stuff but you're talking about 60s you're like I don't know anything like like, nobody I'm like who who I know is alive is doing 60s stuff right now what the hell is like what am I gonna do I mean little did I know at the moment that that's like one of the most important decades and so that's where I kind of learned about Woodstock and I'm like I'm a kid bro like I'm this is no internet yeah like there's no No, internet this is like like books like like looking up like stuff like you gotta go ask people yeah like what's this um yo real quick what, what class is that that was a, that was a, uh, during my music class when I was in um and and I was like either third or fourth grade, and um and so I remember kind of just like learning it just opened up my head man to all this like that that's how I got into like Santana, like how I got into Sign the Family Stone and again like I'm a kid like, like yeah, this is right. not so this is not music I'm supposed to be listening to at mm-hmm. that age, right? So that curiosity has always been there. And and it just got deeper as as the years went by, you know. Like you know, when I was in high school, I was you know huge on like and this. I always had an, an eclectic taste of you know listening to like you know rap music and electronic music and 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 alternative stuff. Like the it, it, the rabbit hole never ended for me. Still has it. Really. Is there a type of music you hate? Hate, uh, not, not a fan of, not a fan. Not a fan. <laughs> Why can we not be toxic? Look at this motherfucker, bro. Like, <laughs> seriously. I mean, no, we can. I mean, so, so evil sometimes. No, but, <laughs> but, but it, it, no, it, it's okay because I, for as much music, well, no, I, mean, I don't, more, you know, hate I, is a strong word. But yeah, that's like, exactly not, what not a fan of, not a fan. Not of, of, that's what well, that's what we um, changed it up. Your it just may, drops your in, interest. Indifferent. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because hate is like too yeah, much energy. Too I don't want to. I don't want to put that yeah. on. Yeah. But oh, uh, I hate that. Get yeah. away. Like, no, I get you. Um, but no, man. I, I think a lot of like just you know, I've I've just class. I've always clashed with a lot of like commercial driven stuff. 
because it uh, just never like felt like mainstream yeah. type of stuff. Like yeah, I mean, obviously, stuff. there's there's some stuff that I think has value, but mm-hmm. for the most part, I think because the intention is so obvious. Make and, money. And, yeah, and yeah. Like, give me my money right now. It's and, like capitalism at its finest. Yeah. yeah, and and so you know, I think with there has to be a certain kind of like you know, for me, art has to do with conviction and yeah. and you know with you presenting an idealized version of of the truth and i I idealized even like when it's raw and not cute you know it's like you get like i'm talking about like authentic yeah Yeah. you know and and authenticity yeah and um and so those things have have stayed yeah have have stayed important to me you know like like those ideas of of you know of of you know vulnerability and 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 showing just fucking like this is this is who what i am and and this is you know yeah what i want to present like that that stuff is still that still holds weight and and you know when you think about it it's at the end of the day it's what people if you look at record collectors that spend like you know thousands of dollars on records it's never on like the most commercial no, stuff. no it's, yeah. always, uh, it's, it's always that's the stuff you can get anywhere. Yeah, they're the, trying to get the stuff that you don't hear off yeah, the like, that, that, that that tickles the, that that eardrum that nobody's like, what is that? Like, so that's what, what they want. What, what, or what they find consider, something and they dig into. What would you consider like one of your like gems that you? Oh yeah. That you found is there something that you've and, like you've you, you found and you're like, oh my god, this has been. Um, uh, oh man. So so this year I actually uh, finally got a record that I've been wanting for more than 15 years, mm. which is um, this uh, folk music album from Brazil by uh, by a composer named Nelson Angelo and and who was his wife Joycey. Um, Joycey went up to become like a huge singer, but this is an album that they did together, and like it's you can feel like the intimacy, of, and it's just an incredible. Mm incredible record you know and um and and it's a very rare record and and you know i had the opportunity to like finally with someone out of brazil to like get that album you know and and you know to finally have it you know was insane and 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 what we did uh you know for the listening session at dante's we played i played that whole thing out man hmm. like what type back. of was that like like you played with your lady is that the type of music it was because you said there was like passion with him and the collaborating with his girl it, yeah it just felt like very you know you know i, I, I felt like um like I, I i love music that kind of like puts me kind of like a like a mosquito in the wall almost you know like i i love that kind of thing like where i could kind of almost like, like it makes you visible to the room yeah like like, yeah. like to what's happening like you know like you could tell like like there's just like you know this beautiful couple you know somewhere you know it's kind of like country. music radar yeah like, like you're like just the, getting and, a vibe of and, what and, everyone's going and, and the countryside of brazil you know just having like this very kind of present moment mm. and like and and, and that shit like like man i, I you know no, i get you it's something like you can paint a picture too like where your eyes mm-hmm. are closed right, right, right so right. something like you can like visualize like how you see like right, movies and right, stuff. right 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 you know, it's like one of those things is like oh, nice. a lot of, I feel like I used to work at Blockbuster. So like my eclectic taste came from like all the movies that I watched and just like, sure, there was always like commercialism that yeah. always go on. And like, I see like, that's cool. Like that's a, the way I got exposed to music. Right. But as like, as I got older, you know, you, you experience things and you open up like, you know, stuff like, like you said, like for me, film or like you really look up the stuff. Like for me, I hate to say it, it was like Ocean's Twelve that really <laughs> no, opened up that, good, man. Whatever like it that is, opened man. up that yeah. that taste because they had yeah. like because it took place in Europe, so there was a lot of like a European influence artists yeah. and stuff like that. Is that the one where Julia Roberts played Julia Roberts? Yes, that is the oh. one that Julia <laughs> Roberts <laughs> played. Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> that oh. is the one. That is the one. Dude. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think they needed to steal an egg or something like that. Uh, they oh that's the one that the Frenchman he's like he's pissed that they 
someone said this is the greatest heist I ever went, and they think they stole like maybe 150 million from the casino. Yeah. So he heard that story on a boat, and he felt like, oh, Lamont, the guy who was like the grand, like the grand thief, thief the grand yeah, thief the of them all. He was he agreed with this guy from Texas, and the French guy got pissed, and that's what caused like him the telling whole riff. the whole riff. I yeah. was like a little a little bit of like, pettiness to the fullest. Yeah, someone got their panties wet. They're like, no, nah, pettiness, buddy. pettiness, no, pettiness. <laughs> Not panties wet. No, no panties, panties wet. But yeah, no I know your hands, bro. bro. I know sorry, <laughs> sorry, my mind so, starts slipping to it somewhere else. Season, <laughs> so, so I, I like how the. Uh, I, you keep it real original. You mostly spin vinyl. What encourage you just to be a vinyl DJ? Mostly no, no vinyl, vinyl. That's it. Just just vinyl. <laughs> yeah, that's well, it. Well, generally it's all vinyl. Okay. Yeah. So what like cause you to like take that route and not like obviously I don't say conform to like you know I sometimes use like yeah. Serato DJ or people use because I still play yeah. vinyl, but vinyl for me is like I. It's an investment, you know. Yeah, it's 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 definitely a commitment. Like, I, mean, I bought two records probably last month, and it cost me like fifty six bucks. Yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah. I can, that's like a monthly subscription to like a DJ pool. Yeah. For like three weeks, and I can just download a yeah. bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like, so what started the record collection that you have today? Who motivated you? And like, uh, were like uh, some of the places that you would go besides Miami right. to, to look for records? So when I, when when I first started, um, I didn't want to buy vinyl. It, it ended up a, a, a situation that, you know, I got so deep into, like, music that there were certain songs that you couldn't find on CD. There were no MP3 stores at the time, like, because we're talking about, like, mid-90s. So, you know, when that when that started happening, um, you know, I started hearing, like, you know, these incredible songs that I could only listen to on that medium. So a lot of independent rap stuff that was coming out, like, you know, some house music that was coming out, you know. Oh, yeah, I love the and, house music and, you play, by the way. Yeah, and so, like, th that was the only way to do it. And and so, I, you know, that was it. Like, I need to, like, get a turntable and get, you know, and start things off. And I, and, and I only had one in the beginning with, like, a two-channel mixer. And, um, and the way I was getting it, because in Santo Domingo, there were, like, no record stores. Like, the, the way I was doing it was, like, um, via the Internet. You know, there was, like, this, uh, there was this uh, web store called um, HipHopSite.com, which was based out of in Las Vegas. And, um, and they, they, like, that site put me on to so much stuff, man. Like, like they were up on, like, Dilla when it was J.D., and they were up on the Mad Lib stuff, like, like when it as like when, like the first releases, like because they 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 got super tight with the Stones Throw people. They were putting out like all their stuff, and the way I would get them into Santo Domingo was that there was this company called um, the Caribbean Postal Service, which was like a private company went to the out of here in Miami, and what they would do would be they would serve as like a package forwarding service because yeah. the thing is like none of these stores did international shipping at the time so you had to have like a u.s shipping address which obviously you know i, I live in santo domingo i don't have, you know we don't have that right and um but what they what, what this company did was basically listen you pay us a subscription and you will have and you will be able to ship whatever package you want to this place in miami and we'll have it to you in santo domingo in like two weeks time Oh shit! Sweet. Wow. <laughs> okay. I like that type of what? guarantee. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. the fuck I'm shipping. Just ship it to me, baby. Yeah. It was like what ninety eight? Uh, yeah, like ninety five, ninety six. Yeah. Man. Then yeah, yeah ninety seven, ninety eight. Like, so yeah. there's still no internet this yeah. time. I mean, so it's, how it's barely, it's barely like it's the internet is there, but it's, it's not everything. Because Windows ninety five, I remember using yeah. Windows ninety five. Dude, uh, I remember they, using like, like that. Yeah, I remember having I, a compact, but I don't remember. Um, so. Definitely the internet was there. Yeah, I mean, the there was, like, cdnow.com, which, you know, that was, like, the first, like, the, that music store, like, that was, like, a thing, man. You ordered your CDs through there. And have it shipped out to, to the CPS address. Bro, was, I worked for a company that offered that service. Uh, there you go. Yeah, exactly. There you go. It was, it, it's like a courier, mm -hmm. but you get a... U.S. postal address, mm -hmm. basically, and mm -hmm. then and then they figure out how to take it to you in whatever country you're at. Yeah, and 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 don't send and, me drugs. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> chill, dude. Well, they, they, they don't. Not they don't do like. And it's Actually, not, the homie, yeah. that's why. It would never make sense to send drugs. Besides, out of the US. you gotta go <laughs> to the. 
Back so, then, but this, we're talking about this 96, guys. Come on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, and there was, like, no... It wasn't, like, door-to-door. Like, they, they have, like, an office, and you would go to this office, and then they look for your package and give it to you. Like, all the time. Yeah. Oh, cool. Wow, yeah. That's throwback. That's real. Yeah. Yeah. So like legit. That. Wow. Yeah, man. It was, it's, it, they're, still, they're still operating to this hey. day. And it's, like, a whole... Like a super like legitimate service. Like, is that where you get all your your nice bootlegs? How do bootlegs? I get into mm-hmm. that scam? Right. Is that where you get all your your nice boot, vinyl bootlegs? I mean, I, there, you dropped. I, you didn't play today, but I, uh, we were at MIA Soundbar. You played this version of uh, Pharrell and Jay Z. I was just fronting. It was like a low fi Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, that 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 happened. That was uh, mid two thousands. Mid two thousands. Yeah, I'm already I'm I'm already in school in the U S. So okay, <laughs> All right, so, okay. Let's backtrack. So, yeah. so okay, so you were born in what Santo Domingo? In Santo Domingo, yeah, born and raised. So how did you go from that transition of like Dominican culture going to American culture, like already? Well, the the transition culturally isn't you know isn't that big of a of a shock because like um you know i can speak i can speak for most countries you know in in latin america that they see the u.s as such a like north you know culturally you know that that it, it it's we were all white you know we were already watching all the movies that were being watched in the u.s listening to all the music like connected to the pop culture of it so mm-hmm. it wasn't like you know the, the the main thing for me was just like just being you know far away from from family and, and that and that kind of stuff was like you know that was like the main the toughest part for me so you, you came like on a student visa yeah 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 on a student okay. visa I, I left uh from santo domingo to boston um 2000 wow. 2001 you know like like right after 9 11 oh, like the week oh, like shit. the week after Damn, I missed... just keep like past like that. Yeah, it was yesterday, bro. Yeah, yeah. Never, yesterday. Never forget, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Never forget. So never forget. I missed. I, I, my bad, I forgot for yeah. a second. No. <laughs> I was I was sure dates. Knock days. knock. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, some, sometimes it's, I don't I'm dumb. Want to remember that, that shit, man. <laughs> but it, it's I I missed I I remember I missed my student orientation because I couldn't travel. Yeah, obviously. You know, so it's like, it, security so like tight. So, yeah, yeah, it got it really really crazy. So you know. um but yeah, so so you know, then it was uh you know I was in Boston and um and 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 the record stuff got crazier. So would you go to exactly? Did you go to like Berkeley? No, I went to Northeastern University, Northeastern. and it was a strategic thing too because like I wanted to my my like I wanted to do uh, music industry. That's what I wanted to study. Uh. But you know my my parents weren't having that. Yeah. Like, nah, nah, you know, nah, nah, like nah, nah, nah. And, and, I don't have to make parents are enough. Yeah, and so like you know, so I ended up uh, being uh, you know I was trying to be a civil engineer like my father, mm-hmm. and um, you know that was a huge failure. You know, but you know the reason I got in was because I knew Northeastern had a very big music industry uh, division, you know, within the school. Mm. And I figured I could major in the engineering and do music industry and we can find world peace. Yeah. You know, like, I'll just minor in it. You know? I'll just minor in it. I'll just minor in it. That's what's up. And, um, but it, you know, it did, it ended up not being like that. Uh, I ended up quitting, you know, engineering school, like my third year in, uh, there, it, there's a, a whole other story, so I'll try to keep it to the to the record part. But um, but yeah, so so it it just started getting crazier, man. And now I had access to like proper record shops, you yeah. know, both in Boston and in Cambridge. Um, and that's when I really started to like, cause I was always buying like new music, like you know. And now it was like getting into like the old stuff, and you know, buying like. Prince records and and Herbie Hancock records and and, and and getting into like all these different genres, um, and 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 also what was going on you know in, in, with the bootlegs and and the electronic stuff. So it 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 got, bro. Like my my the apartment I used to live in in Boston looked like a fucking lab. <laughs> like that wasn't even a place like that you would want to live in because it was just like it was like towers of books and records and like you know like it was it was crazy man. did you do college radio while you were in, uh, in college there no 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 i, w- I wish man i that i i kind of regret that because i i, I would have been more plugged in I, I was just like so much of like just being at home and, and nerding out man like like weekends for me were, was like walking cambridge like you know harvard and central square 
looking for books and records. That's all I spent my money on. Dude, and it was a crazy time in Boston because that's when like the Red Sox were, like broke the curse. Yeah, and, and the so Patriots I, too. And the Patriots. Yeah. So, like, I can imagine oh. like you being around yeah. everyone enthusiastically. Yo, let's party. Let's do this. You're like, nah, bro. Yeah. I want to just go to these records. The, the, <laughs> the, the first time the Patriots won, that was like borderline dangerous. Yeah. What was happening like in the streets, and 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 that first time like the the and, and when the Red Sox won too, because like they were taking cars that had New York plates, mm -hmm. and they were fucking like destroying them. Like, oh like, damn! Man. It was like, dude, it was like bad. And wish like, we could bring that down here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it it was like really wild, man, and and it was just like crazy. If they if they saw you with like some Yankee hat, like you'd get beat up by like five dudes. Oh, like it was, it was like that kind of like like yeah, thing, you know. That's that real serious phase. Yeah. Um, so how did you make your way to like Miami? So the way, I, uh, so after you know, I was working in Boston after I graduated. I was working at a recording studio um, in in. Uh, in Boston, and uh, an uh, opportunity came up t for me to come down to Miami to work at a studio called the Satai Recording Studio, which was a recording studio that uh, belonged to Lenny Kravitz um, oh, cool. in, in Miami Beach. And uh, I, I I had no intentions of, of leaving the East Coast. My, my plan originally was to co go to New York because um, I didn't want to come to Miami because I felt like the city was like, just bullshit you know like it's it's not what it is now you it's know it's obnoxious just, yeah like <laughs> i know just, you mean back in the 2000s yeah, all about like, house music and yeah, like well, commercial hip -hop. but house music like in the worst way oh ever. yeah like, like it wasn't like, even like, like uh, david you know, getta right yeah. right yeah. and so he had some good bangers yeah. i mean dude <laughs> yeah. I, I, sexy bitch <laughs> i guess <laughs> i guess if a girl could like let's not change topics but i get what you're saying i get what you're saying it just didn't feel like like you know I, I just couldn't see myself being here. Like, you know, right. I, I like going to theaters to watch documentaries and shit. Like, that was right. like, my, you know, my thing. And so, um, so yeah, so, you know, uh, but that's like right when things were starting to kind of begin here in the city. Like, when would I just started, you know, getting, this was uh, 2011. I Back believe. when we had Art Walk. Yeah, and when it was like Still, cool, right? Yeah. When like, it was when it was, yeah, it was like four dollars for a beer at one yeah. tavern. Yeah, good stop times. with the taverns. Bring back the art. So uh, yeah, so this was uh, I think uh, 2011. Yeah, and um, you know, so I had my interview. Uh, I remember I came in. Man, Boston was so cold. I came in like in the morning, bro, and it was like the perfect. Sky, dude, like, you bro, know, back like in Dominican the Republic, yeah, Indians. bro, <laughs> like, no, man, and, and, and back and in the islands, dude, again. dude, like, and, look, 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 yeah, man, and 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 the, like the palm trees, everything was like perfect. I was like, man, I don't know, I, I think I could, I think I could, I think I could do <laughs> yeah, it, I think I, I could do, do it. it. <laughs> it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's not cold, at least it's not cold, yeah, yeah, I can't deal with that because I can't, I can't, I'm never going back, I'm never going back. I family that still lives in Rhode Island, dude. I have family that live in Rhode Island. I, I can go yeah. visit, play with it. Maybe, maybe in the summer. Yeah, back. man. You can go to Boston it's, in the summer. Boston in the Boston summer. In the summer. The summer. It's, 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 you know, like, the, I would always get told, like, you'd get used to the cold, but you don't. Like, oh. it, it's, oh, man. it's you, you don't, I mean, it's, it's, you can't take, like, the tropic out of me. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it, it's, it, it was it was rough for me, man. I like, need to be close to the equator. Yes. Uh, talking about like, tropical. Literally. I, literally. I, uh, we got to do a, a couple segments. Because, uh, you know, you know, from Santo Domingo, we had to bring out the... Every, that Uruguay, I see it, man. Yeah. They got it. And he said, like, yo, I want to do some rum and coke. I'm like, of course, bro. Yeah, of course. Man. So I had to bring, I was like, what type of rum? I was like, bro, I want to bring some. Of course. Rum. Of course, I mean, of course. I mean, this is a shout out to our listeners. If you if you're looking for like a little cheap buzz, I wouldn't say it. cheap. I mean, Econ it was affordable, e economical, economical. economical you're right. Well, this economical. is from the guy who said, "Hey, economical, let's go." Th this is go. the the, but it really is a good more affordable version. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's one of those like, yo, this is like, okay, this is you're on a budget, twenty bucks. Can drink this. I figure, like you know, for people who like, yeah, I just want to have like a cocktail too, but I want to go over right, my banger right, right. buck, you know, right? Yeah, you know? 
It's a decent bottle of rum. It's, bro, it it hits. is. It hits, bro. It hits. Yeah. It hits. But I do like a rum and cola. If you're that. tired of Bacardi or the Captain, try this something Dominican, you know? Open I mean, your taste buds. You know, yeah, Renato Pata. Renato yeah. Pata, so we had to do Dominican. Yeah, that's that's right. I, really, I want to drink Presidente, too, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I that's saw my... a, bottle, a bottle of Presidente when I got here. There was one. Yeah, there was like one here. Like I don't one. know who that was. I mean, shout, out shout out to the Dominicans. Hey. Shout out to Rafa. Yo, <laughs> you know, you know the 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 you can find the small p on the bottle. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That's it is. what she said. No, dude, wow. <laughs> this guy's got jokes. This guy's got jokes. So no. shout out to Brugal. Some little rum and coke, a little lime twist. So if you're on the go and you want to have a little cocktail, can't go wrong with a rum and coke. Oh no, that's yes. a good tradition. Any Caribbean person can exactly. appreciate that. That's like exactly. a, I it's feel like freedom. Yeah, this wow. Yeah, it's freedom. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, you can call it that. I just like I just like how all the all the Caribbean countries have like their own type of rum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I like something about like Dominican rum that's like and Dominican beer that really hits. You and know, Dominican that, women. Stop it. But we know we can get into what's that fragrance of the month that you have? Oh man, um, I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm a big fan of green fragrances, and you know, I definitely have been growing. This is something I like that's very inviting, and you know, I don't like to be out with people very often, but I do like when I am out. I do like to be noticed. I don't like to be talked to. I like to be noticed. So, um, this one I genuinely do have a lot of good luck with. It's called Amazing Green. The main notes you got to know about this, it's made with green peppers. Like, when the fuck did you smell a green pepper the last time? I don't know. Um, I'm cooking. Palm tree leaves. Are you really going to pick one up off the ground and just smell it? No. But it actually has that grassy feel to it. Aside from that, it has ivy. It has musk. It's a citrusy. Oh, a cool thing about this is it also has... Uh, gunpowder you know as gun one powder? of the notes so when you spray this exactly it's supposed to be like you're triggering a essence a blast of green so here feel free to try this yeah. shit out pass it to it guess it like, yeah it's yeah. Yeah. Like feel free. It. pass it around feel the world. free to wear that out but yeah it's by comme de garçon it's a spanish fragrance oh, Re- great man yeah. exactly yeah, that's one nice. you know and this is one of those wherever i pass go like Rafa, you're more than welcome. This is from your home country, I think. Yeah, oh, I hear. I want to. Oh yeah. Viva España! I I hope they get rid of that coach for what he did. Oh man. But I've always socio. I've always found this segment of the show to be so unique that thank I just you. always want to know what you brought. Well, thank you, man. I just want to give people an idea of what's out there. Yeah, this so, is fantastic, man. This is the uh, Amazing Green by Comme de Garçon. You can get this at Ulta Beauty, Needless Markup, a.k.a. Neiman Marcus. I hope they close. They probably will soon. Yo, I'll let it slide. All right. I'll let it slide. Um, I'll but slide. for locals here in Wynwood, you could get it at Osme Perfumery. I hope y'all do have it, and I'm not talking out of my ass. So I like this, dude. Repeat the name. Osme Perfumery. I have no affiliation. No, the name no, no, of name the, the, perfume. the, the name oh, of the cologne. Amazing Green. In amazing Green. It, it really does. Like, it do lit. It's like a. It's like you get that triggered and it, then that explosion of green on it. So it's like, damn, the name is so fitting. And I'm not gonna lie, when a company goes this level to make this kind of fragrance, like, damn, good, good on you. Thank you for fucking with my senses. <laughs> yeah, that was great, that was man. Really yeah. this is, this I think that's grass, delicious. definitely. Yeah, like, very it's green, very grass. No sweet, which I love. No. I hate when they Dude. they smell sweet. It's like musky. I'm not yeah. a big fan of the sweet. And I don't think it's that uh, musky. No, I mean, no, it's, it's, it it's smells fresh. like like yeah, it smells like a it's dude, a vetiver, but it doesn't dude. smell. It's a vetiver that takes you there. Exactly, yeah. there is vetiver. Thank you, John. Yo, your nose is developing. It's, uh, <laughs> I love this shit. Yo, you called out a note. I didn't even say this shit. You're it's good. subtle. It's nice, dude. You're getting good. You're getting better. It's vetiver, man. This is good. That's pretty much what I'm trying to teach you, motherfuckers out there, bro. Like, listen, the more you expose your nose, the more you, the more you get used to like shit that you're not used to around you. You're like, oh my god, this is what this smells like. Try th- different things. Try different music. Try different fucking smells. You might be surprised at the luck you get. 
Yeah. There I mean, it is. Change the different there senses. From yeah. 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 I let, I let my boy preach about this a little mm-hmm. bit. Can't go too overboard with no, that. No, I know. I get all my yeah, rants and then I go out. No, we're not going to do anything. We're actually going to wrap it up. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, hey Zeus, is there any events that you have coming up? I know you've been popping lately, just all around playing vinyl. Yeah, uh, we've got uh, Roman, next Roman Coke is on September twenty fourth at uh, at Dante's, nice. and uh, and that one's gonna be cool too because at midnight is my birthday. So. Oh, oh, nice! Okay. It's gonna be a lituation. Right. Congratulations, dude. sir! Yeah. Bro, we're we're bringing out the Dominican cake. For that night. Oh uh, yes, you know so. Right, so we need to show up. We need to show yeah, up. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Going in yeah. September twenty uh, fourth Sunday. September twenty fourth. Going Hasalami. I mean, well, well, we're just gonna do the cake. Yeah, that night, right? just gonna, just gonna, just gonna <laughs> you gotta save me a slice, man. I gotta yeah, save no, it no. Too. If, come sorry, through, come cake. through, man. I'm sorry. And I'll, uh, also your your Instagram rum and coke, just how it's spelled, right? Yeah, rum rum and coke, Miami. Oh man, that's what's up. Thank you yeah. again, Jesus. Oh man, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. I really am glad you came. You really set the tone for the night. It kind of gives the, a definition of what mahogany is, you know? Because yeah. mm-hmm. mahogany yeah. can be anything, baby. It is. Soul. But, you know, but today was little. It was soulful. It was, it's collect, it was eclectic, dude. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. thank you for having me, guys. I really oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Great vibe. Great spinning. This thank YouTube, you, man. Thank the you. YouTube subscription is going to be lit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you want to check out this interview, if you didn't have a chance to check out the interview, Give all these- a month or two. And a month no. Ago, nah, yeah. just chill, dude. We gotta do it before his birthday. I do it much sooner than yeah. that. It's on me. It'll happen much sooner than that. Also, obviously, follow us on YouTube at Jolt Radio Miami, right, Rafa? Yeah. Yeah. Follow us on. Uh, you can always check out all our episodes on Jolt Radio Miami on YouTube. Uh, you can find this set. You can find Miami. this show. Joe. Yeah, exactly. All and then check out the Instagram because that's Hawkins. where you can see like what we're up to, I guess. Yeah, all up to date stuff. What sales story? Well, that's different. Um, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. So, obviously, thank you again for tuning into Mahogany. I'm your host, Adigre. Stay wavy, guys. You going to play a side on something? Yeah, this is rare. Hell yeah. Turn it up. Listening to Jolt Radio, you just heard Mahogany. We'll be back in a couple minutes, maybe, maybe many minutes, maybe not. Jolt After Dark. We'll see if it happens. We'll see if it doesn't. But if not, go to the Instagram, Jolt Radio, or the YouTube, and uh, we'll see what happens in the next five, ten minutes. <laughs>